In this video, we'll try to understand what exactly is bundling and minification. Now, before I move ahead, let me talk about how does bundling and minification helps us. Bundling and minification helps to increase performance in MBC. So, how does it do it? So, you can see here what I've done is in order to understand, you know, how bundling and minification helps to increase performance, I have created a very, very simple MBC project by using the empty template. Please note, I have created this project by using the empty template. And you can see here in this project, I have two JavaScript files. I have created a scripts folder here. And you can see that uh, I have two uh, simple JavaScript file here. In this first JavaScript file, I have some variables and you know that variable is doing addition and it's doing a multiplication there are some comments and you can see in the javascript 2.js file you know i have just put a simple alert hello right so a very simple mbc project which i've created using the empty template and there are, and there are two javascript files in this you know one which has some comments and some enters and uh, there are there is a second javascript file you know which is just having some alert hello right so now let me go and create a very simple controller here and uh, that controller will uh, have a very simple action which will go and invoke a simple view and in that view I will go and consume both these JavaScript files. So let me name this controller as some controller okay and in this controller let me go and create an action saying display view. So in this some controller what I'll do is I'll go and create an action here called as uh, display view and uh, I'll go and create a simple view here so let me go and add a view and uh, what this view does is it actually uh, just goes ahead so a very simple view here it just displays uh, this is demo of minification and uh, bundling right now what this view does is it actually consumes both these JavaScript files. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go drag and drop both of these JavaScript files over here, right? So this view consumes both these JavaScript files. So you can see here, I have created a very simple view here and this view what it does is it actually use, uses both the JavaScript 1 and JavaScript 2.js file right and this view is invoked you know by this uh, action here called as display view right now what I'll do is I'll go and run this program in Chrome please note I'm going to use Chrome for now so I'm going to do a control F5 here very quickly so let us go and invoke our action display view so you remember our controller name was sum and our view name was display view so let me press enter here and uh, so you can see that our application is running so if you remember this hello is coming from javascript 2.js file okay so that's fine so our application is running and i can see the text file here as well now remember that i am using chrome okay now what we'll do is let's do Control shift i and let's see you know what kind of request and response are we getting now when you do a Control shift i it actually goes and opens up the developer tool so i'm going to do a Control shift i here and the time I do that, you will see that developer tool has popped up. So you can see here's a simple developer tool here. And I've clicked on the network tab. And now let me again press enter. Okay. And let us see what we see here. So just one more time. Just to get a better view. Right. So there we are. Now, if you see the number of requests in the, in the network tab of Google Chrome, there are three requests. The first one is to the page, displayview.aspx. The second one is to the JavaScript file, the JavaScript 1.js and the third one is for JavaScript 2.js. So we have three requests here, one for the ASPX page uh, and the other two are for the JavaScript files, right? Now, wouldn't it be great, you know, if the JavaScript requests are combined into one request? In other words, if there was some mechanism, you know, by which we can go and combine both these JavaScript JS file into one file during runtime, and uh, just make one request and get both of these files you know because think about situations you know where you have jquery files you know you have a lot of a lot of javascript files like five or six javascript files let's say you have css files here right so the number of requests uh, will increase you know depending on the number of uh, files you have right so you'd like to probably go and combine all these javascript files and all the cs files into one bundle 
and call them in one go and that is termed as bundling so defining bundling bundling helps us to combine multiple javascript and css files into a single entity during runtime by doing so what happens is multiple requests are combined into a single request and which in turn helps us to improve performance now bundling and minification is done by using system.web.optimization namespace and this assembly or this dll is not a part of core .NET framework or ASP.NET framework. So we need to go and uh, download this uh, system.web.optimization namespace, refer that uh, in our project and then only we can do bundling and minification. So what, what we'll do is we'll use Nugget to get a reference of system.web.optimization. In case you are new to Nugget, what my suggestion is to go and see the video on Nugget so that you can understand the fundamentals of Nugget. So in this video, I'm not going to explain you what is Nugget. So uh, you can go and see the video and then you can understand, you know, what basically Nugget is and how to use it. But for now, I'll go and uh, invoke Nugget here. And I would like to go and search online uh, the optimization package, right? So you can see in the search over here, you know, we have got this ASP.NET optimization, which introduce a way to bundle and optimize CSS and JavaScript files. So we definitely need this. So let us go ahead and, and, and install this package over here. So let's click on install here. So you can see this green sign here, which indicates that this package is installed. So let me just go and close this and let's go into our references and let's just check uh, if the web dot optimization is there, yes, it is there. So that means everything is nice, good. So that is great. So the first step is we need to go and reference the system dot web dot optimization assembly into a project because that assembly is responsible to do bundling and minification. And now the next step is to go ahead and add a bundle config dot cs file into the app underscore start folder. Now remember that if you have selected the basic template then you will get this bundle config.cs file here created by itself but if you have selected the empty template the way i have done here now then you need to go and create the bundle config.cs file so because we have created uh, this project by using the empty template i need to go and add the bundle config file manually so i'm going to go and add a class file here and i will name the class file as bundle config.cs so let me go and select this class file here and I'll say this class file name is bundle config.cs. I'm going to go and add this. And in this bundle config file, I need to go and create a method here called as register bundles, you know, and uh, this register bundle method will actually go and take all the JS files and create one file out of it. Okay. So you can see here in this register bundles method, what I'm doing is I'm saying bundles.add. So create a new script bundle with the name as bundles and include all the files which are there in the scripts directory. So if you remember, we had created a scripts directory here, you know, where we had all our JS files. So take all the JS file in the scripts directory and create a bundle out of it. Now, remember that this bundle collection, uh, you know, belongs to the system.web.optimization. So we need to ensure that we reference the appropriate namespace here. So let's go ahead and say, okay, I want to reference the system.web.optimization. So if you do that, you can see all the red things have gone off. And remember, system.web.optimization is not a part of ASP.NET framework at this moment. It is not a part of .NET framework. You need to use the Nugget tool to install this system.web.optimization DLL, right? So that it is. So we have created the bundle config file. I'm going to just go and build this whole solution to ensure everything is fine. So now the next thing is, you know, we need to go and flourish this bundle collection in the MVC uh, startup method somewhere, right? And the best place to go and flourish this bundle config file is, uh, or the bundle collection is in the global.asx application start event. So if you remember, the global.asx file has events, you know, which has application start, application end, session start and session end kind of events, right? So this application start event, uh, you know, fires for the first time when your application runs so in other words as soon as you go and host your mvc application this application underscore start event will fire right so this is the best place where we can go and flourish our um, bundle config file so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go and first refer this namespace here so let me go and uh, do a control c here so i'm going to say using 
so using right and over here i'll say please go and flourish or register the bundles from bundle table now remember again over here also we need to reference uh, the system dot web dot optimization namespace or else we will not be getting uh, you know the class references to bundle bundle collection etc right so i'm going to say here okay go and reference the bundle table so very quickly bundle bundles so bundle table dot bundle so there it is so let me go and just build this solution once to just ensure if everything is right so rebuild all succeeded so you can see now uh, in the application underscore start event i am going and flourishing all the bundle collection and this bundle collection will have uh, you know it will go and combine all the js file into one bundle right so we are all set we have created a bundles collection now we need to go and uh, call this bundle collection in the display view dot aspx if you remember right in the view currently we are having this script written like this so we need to go and use the system dot web dot optimization and call the bundle collection here to go and inject that one big javascript file which will be created on runtime over here so the first thing is i'll get rid of all this thing from here uh, and I'll say here, please use the system dot web dot optimization and render all my scripts which are there in the bundles collection. Remember, we had created a bundles collection by the name bundles. So please go and refer that bundles over here and inject that one combined JavaScript over here. Now let us go and run this. Let's see what happens. And let's when we run this application, let's again go and start our Chrome developer tool to see that, you know, if we are seeing multiple calls to JavaScript files. So I've done a control F5 here. So there the browser is running. But before we start, uh, you know, to call our controller and the action, let us go ahead and run the developer tool. Let's click on the network tab here. Now let me go and invoke my controller and the view. So let us go and invoke this. Now you can see here very clearly Previously, we had two calls to the JavaScript file. If you remember, we had three calls, right? The first one actually goes and calls the view. The second one goes and calls JavaScript 1. And uh, then the, there was a third call which calls JavaScript 2.js, right? But you can see now, he's calling the bundles here. In other words, there is only one call. In other words, this is termed as bundling. Rather than making multiple JavaScript calls or rather than making multiple calls to the CSS file, I have made only one call. And if I go out of curiosity and if I click on this bundles here very quickly. Now, if you see here, if you look at this code over here, you can see this is the combination of JavaScript 1.js and JavaScript 2.js. So if you remember, this is JavaScript 1.js and this is JavaScript 2.js, right? So you can see now how they have combined into only one file. Uh, that is one thing. Uh, the second thing is very interesting is you can see now this where x equal to 0 x equal to x plus 1 you can see he has removed all the enters he has removed all the comments if you remember the original javascript 1.js it had enters it has spaces it had comment at the top everything has been removed over here this is termed as minification minification reduces the size of script files or css files by removing blank spaces comments enters you know so for example here you can see he has removed the enters the comments and everything so bundling what it does is it combines multiple javascript files or css file into one unit during runtime so that the number of calls are reduced to the server and that increases performance while minification reduces the size of script and css files by removing unnecessary blank spaces and comments and if the file size gets reduced then definitely the efficiency of the program increases so I hope that you enjoyed this video. In this video, we were trying to understand what exactly is bundling and minification and how to go about implementing the same. Thank you so much.